Now, from the makers of Cold Water Omo, Mrs. Peel came flying in from Steve's kitchen upon hearing the shot that killed the man known as Bart. You're going to have trouble with your cleaning woman, Steve. She must be fed up with this sort of thing. Well, it's not my fault. He tried to kill me. Anti-social. I must say you ruined his honeymoon. Eh? Hey? Well, this man, he was on the train, accompanied by a blushing bride in the just married compartment. I checked. Hmm. Well, let's see what he's carrying on him. Wallet and a rail ticket. Chase Holt Station. What's that? About three stops down the line from Norborough, except that nothing stops there anymore. Oh, why? Because Chase Holt closed down years ago. I think we shall have to take yet another train journey, don't you, Mrs. Peel? The Avengers. And Emma Peel, The Avengers. Once an Omo user, always an Omo user. Because it gets out the worst dirt and stains. Mrs. Francis of Port Elizabeth found that Omo cleaned her husband's bathing trunks. He used to come home and they'd be mopped and sludged with tar and uh, oil from our beaches. Well, he wanted to throw them away. So, well, he'd throw them over now and called them to Omo. And the next day they were shimmering half again. Goldwater Omo cleans best. Over a million South African housewives have proved it. Day in night out, and only a woman. Now you can choose from Benolia's five new classic fragrances. Episode three of this story, in which John Steed and Emma Peel find themselves incapable of stopping a most dangerous train of events. <laughs> John Steed and Emma Peel had got off at Norborough Station to help Mark Lucas, a top secret agent, who was in trouble. They'd missed him at the station, but picked up his briefcase on the train back to London. The contents of the case were extremely interesting. Most of the papers were in code and would take Steed some time to decipher. But there was also a photograph and information on Edward Salt, personal secretary to Admiral Cartney, a bigwig at the Admiralty. Before following through on the death of Bart and making a visit to Chase Holt, Mrs. Peel dropped in at the Admiralty. Her visit had been arranged nicely. She was now a journalist. Well, thank you so much, Admiral, for the conducted tour. I really didn't think my readers warranted more than a junior aide. Your yeah, public relations, my dear lady, are most important. You write a good piece for us and it helps recruitment and we get a better choice of men. Good job all round, what? Oh, that is true. Yes, after all, your women readers want much the same thing as we want in the Admiralty. Really? More able-bodied men, what? <laughs> uh, a few more yes. questions. What are you? It's far away. What exactly do you do? Oh, oh, dear. I do wish you hadn't asked that. But since I have... Well, I'll tell you, but it does make me sound like a sort of travel agent. Me, who fought five major sea battles in the last war. <laughs> yeah, still looking at it another way, it is important work. What is it? Uh, well, I take care of all the travel arrangements for VIPs, wherever they go, on land or sea. I, I, uh, I don't mind the sea bit, but oh, on land... In other words, if, if someone important wants to go from A to B... You make sure they're comfortable. No, more than that, more than that. I make sure they're secure, yes. Can't have people popping off half the government, you know. <laughs> no, I have to make sure all is well and ship shape. Have to check every security arrangement. Oh, yes, which reminds me. Assault. Uh, yes, sir? Uh, pop this file back into top secret register. Yeah, good, sir. Uh, uh, oh, and by the way, sir, uh, Mrs. Hamilton called. Yes, I'll speak to her. Uh, see Mrs. Peel ashore, will you? Uh, certainly, sir. Well, thank you, Admiral, for your cooperation. Uh, pleasure, my dear, pleasure. Uh, this is Mrs. Peel. Good day, Admiral. Hello, you gorgeous little sailor's friend. <laughs> Where do we go to splice the main brace? Hey, you beauty, what? <laughs> Mrs. 
It was later that day that Steed and Emma Peel got themselves to chase Halt. It was another cold and windy day. The station building was deserted and filled with cobwebs. Old weighing machines and slot machines stood amongst the piles of rubbish. The windows were filthy. There was a general air of decay. What's the smell? Old refuse, decaying timetables, sunny seaside posters. Hmm. Look at this. Broken window pane and something that looks suspiciously like a bullet hole. Glass fell inward, so if it is a bullet hole... The gun was fired from the platform. Right. How did you get on with the notes from the briefcase? Did you manage to decode anything important? Well, it was a bit diffuse. It appears that Lucas had stumbled onto a plan to pop off a VIP. I couldn't say who or where. A VIP? Now, that would make a link to friend Salt. His boss takes care of all the travel arrangements for VIPs. Cartney, the amorous admiral. Who's the amorous? Oh, I can tell by the way he looks. So we don't know who the VIP will be. Lucas hadn't found out when he drafted the papers. Did he say who he suspected was going to do the job? Nothing specific, just some splinter groups, fanatics. He managed to intercept some radio messages. What was that? It was as though there's someone or something in the waiting room. Steed walked swiftly across the platform and kicked in the door. Hey, hey, what's the idea? What are you doing? You're trespassing. You know that? This is my station. Your station? Well, I bought it. Well, I'm negotiating to buy it. Humble beginnings, you know. I have high hopes. One day, maybe, a mainline station. King's Cross or Waterloo? Oh, a terminus, yes. That's what I've got my eye on. You mean you live here? Oh, that's right. Well, isn't it noisy? <laughs> well, does a Venetian complain of the sound of water? Oh, I didn't realise it was quite the same thing. <laughs> my name is Crew. I live in the signal box down the line. Do trains ever stop here? Oh, not for the past nine years. Are you always here? Always. Were you here last night? Well, of course. Are you sure? Yes, hundred percent. You are. Why do you ask? Answer my question. Please. Well, uh, last night. Yes, yeah. I had a phone call from um, uh, a dealer with an 1892 water system. Jubilee commemorative issue. Mint condition. Now, at a price quoted, it was a giveaway. Absolute giveaway. Did you get it? No, nah, no, nah, no. Nah. When I got there, it was a practical joke. It was a final insult. I missed the last train and had to take a bus. A bus, I asked. Yeah. Half express. Get on, son. Name's Watkins. Wilson's being nice, better. Yeah, I got a good feel for the plays of Wilson. Well, it's a pity about old Tate Holt. But then, uh, I'll look after it best I can. Well, I wrote to the Queen, but she didn't answer. Well, I must have got the wrong address. Uh, Loco, spiders, are you? Loco? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, okay, why don't I drop it in the signal box for some refreshment? Uh, well, some other time. Oh, uh, well, shoot yourself. I must get on now. As the old man turned away, a long parcel wrapped in sacking crashed to the floor. Oh, God, it's a practical jokers. Hey, who would I found in the ladies' waiting room? The old man unwrapped the sacking. Steve and Emma Peel found themselves looking down at a nameplate, Norborough. Station nameplate, Norborough. Is this station identical with Norborough? Oh, yes, yes. Well, in almost every detail. It's the uh, Scott Charming design. He was the architect, you see. Oh, there's about uh, a couple of dozen of them up and down the country. That's very interesting. Thank you. Oh, um, 4767. Does that mean anything to you? Oh, no, no. I can't say it does. Well, I must be getting along. Here, bye for now. You think he's involved? The involved is obsessed, is a better word. Plain loco. The nameplate. The two Norbers for the price of one. Steve, you were saying something about Lucas intercepting some radio messages. Yes, from their HQ, wherever that is, Lucas couldn't get a fix. As soon as he beamed in on their transmissions, they moved away. Packed up the whole HQ. Doesn't make sense. Steed had been wandering about the untidy waiting room. He walked across to a large toolbox, which read, In case of fog, he opened it. I don't see how an HQ could be moved all that easily. Well, perhaps Lucas will fill in all the gaps when we find him. No. No, I don't think that's possible, Mrs. Peel. Look. Mrs. Peel moved across and looked into the tool chest. Lucas? Yes. Shot. Makes it poor Lucas. Maybe this was their headquarters. The oldest established permanent floating headquarters. From one derelict railway station to another one. Could be. What now? Well, first we'll get poor Lucas discreetly moved, and then... We'll get friend Salt of the Admiralty some information. Some homemade information. Hmm. If she is the leech, 
and it almost certainly is, then well, we'll just see where he takes that information. Exactly. We'll put some salt on his tail, in fact. Come on. <laughs> Later, in the Admiralty, the Red Scrambler phone rang. Uh, Admiral Carter, are in? Yes, uh, yes, sir. Certainly. Salt? Uh, yes, sir. Sir Rodney. Uh, yes, 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 Sir Rodney. I've got your coded signal in front of me. Periscope photographs. Yes, yes, I like it. Like it very much. Photographs, sir. Uh, thank you. Oh, yes, Sir Rodney. Oh, this is a scrambled call, isn't it? It can't be too careful. Look, um, the chief of the general staff retiring. There's a collection. Oh, to tell me, what do you think? Ten shillings or go mad and give him a pound? Huh? Yeah, okay, yes, yes. I just wanted to clear it with you. Yes, yes, I've got that. Don't worry. Top security. <coughs> well, so, action at last. Top secret maneuvers. A planned tour of the enemy's offshore installation. Just and yes. But also boarding the train for Liverpool were a newly married couple. The girl, slipping her arm through her husband's, suddenly halted. Hey! Wait! Wait, see that man? The one in the front with the bowl and the umbrella? That's him! That's the one Bart went after. What? You sure? Bart didn't report back, did he? Missing. Believed dead. We'd better look into this, hadn't we? More trouble coming up in the rear, Steve. <laughs> Take the protection of famous shield deodorant. Squeeze it inside a sensational soap, and you've got... The soap deodorant. Here's a deodorant you simply wash on. Shield soap deodorant. A soap that cleans all over with a rich, luxurious lava. A soap that protects all over with a certainty of shield. Complete protection can't start till you're clean all over. That's why shield have invented the soap deodorant. New shield soap deodorant. Once an OMO user, always an OMO user, like Mrs. Bodington. My wash is beautiful, and I'm very proud of it. There's nothing like cold water OMO. No dirt can stand up to OMO. Over a million housewives have proved it. It cleans best. The Avengers. Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers, brought to you by the makers of Cold Water Omo. The Avengers, Donald Monat as John Steed and Diane Appleby as Emma Peel, is adapted and directed by Dennis Falbig and produced by David Gooden.